Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can design your own liftgate. We're going to look at a very basic setup and then we're going to look at a more complex setup like I have on my own layout. And I want to teach you the basics so you can also design it yourself. Why do you want a liftgate in the first place? Well, I keep on saying that the most efficient use of uh, your room to build a layout in is to have some kind of around the wall design. But if the layout is around the wall, then that means you also need a way to get into your layout. So here is my layout and here is the door and this is the way that I get into my layout. So if it's a fixed bridge like this, then I think technically you'd call it a duck under. You have to duck under this thing all the time. I had one on one of my previous layouts and I'm never gonna make that mistake again. So I built a lift gate. My lift gate got a little bit out of hand. It has some fancy features like an automatic stop that the train doesn't just roll up into the abyss. And on this side, we have something fancy as well to make sure that the train does not just run off. We'll have a look at that later. This is the entire layout. And if we just look at the structure of things, then this orange and blue um, boxes, let's say, that is the bench work that's fixed. So if we just strip this drawing down, here you see the core of the bench work and where the legs are. And here's in black and white. Let's draw in the fixed areas first. So we have one fixed area here that's shown in blue. And it's fixed because it has the legs there and it connects to the main layout. And on the left we have a fixed area as well with the two legs. And this could be also be bolted or screwed to the wall. And I'm gonna to choose to have the gate lift uh, or swing open to the left. So the hinge is gonna be here on the left side. Now I want to connect this area to the main layout for some extra structure and rigidity. So that's what is happening right here. So everything you see now is fixed. So let's work on the lifting in the non-fixed section. So let's draw that in orange. And then here on the left, it will obviously again be connected to the hinge. And on the right, it will land on this blue fixed beam right there. And then it's actually, despite that the shape is a bit odd, quite straightforward from here. First, we want to span the entire width of the aisleway so we add these two support beams. This is the same as we saw in the previous, more simple example. And then here, we're just going to add, do the same, just create some more support. And then it's just all a matter of boxing this in for more rigidity and to support the top layer. And because we have a angle or a curve right here that's um, sticking out a bit, I do wanna add one more beam right there. And this all lifts up to the left. So here we are back at the layout and here you see uh, nicely the, the just basically the structure that we just drew in on the computer. Now let's have a look at a few features. And the first feature that's missing is a way actually to keep the lift gate up. So I'm just using this bungee cord for now, but I need to get something else in the future, obviously. Um, now here we see the, the stop because it's important to stop your train to make sure that it doesn't just run off the layout. So I made a physical barrier. A lot of folks, they use an electrical barrier, let's call it, which means that if the engine is in this section of track that and the gate is up, that the power would be cut off. So basically you have a switch here. When the gate goes up, the power is cut. So if this would be the engine, it would just come in here and just stop as an emergency feature. But because I'm going to run my engines on the back of the train in some cases, it means that I need to have the entire length of the train, that piece of track, to be a cut off of the power. And in, on both sides, this side and on here, you see I've been busy laying track. It means that up to about here, I need to cut the track power. And this is the heart of the, the switching area. So that's not very feasible. So that's why I chose for a, a mechanical solution, as crude as it might be, but as effective as it is as well. So if we swing around to the other side, this section has some important features. First, uh, it actually has three features. The first one is this, this is a piece of wood right here, and this is where the lift gate rests onto. I could have made this longer and wider, which is more convenient because then you have more space to add other features like the hinge and this uh, safety mechanism right here. Let's first talk about the hinge. The sole purpose of the hinge is to lock the gate in place. The hinge locks all freedoms of motions except for the, the roll, because obviously it's a hinge, it still needs to hinge. But because we have the lift gate locked in here on the other side, um, also with a hinge, then the gate is fixed and you lock in all the freedoms of motion at the hinge. When you're looking for a hinge, do look at one 
where the pin can really easily be removed. That's not always the case. Now on this side, I needed something, um, I had to come up with something a little bit more elaborate to make the train from, um, from rolling off the layout. And I came up with this very simple folding, yeah, golf club shape. Yeah, pop-up device. I just connected it to a rubber band right here. That connects down there. I could also just use a weight, just a piece of rope with, I don't know, a shoe at the end or something like that. So, we don't want to test that, of course. So here we have a car. And I'm going to do it a bit gentle. Because I don't want to break my... Bonk, just like that. It's actually the first time I tested. Because I believe it works. And it works. So if we want to get a closer shot of that in action, that will be like that. And of course, we all want to see that from the rabbit hole. So let's do that again from here. And now you also see why the angle is curved on the top because it needs to curve down. Just like that. Let me just keep it closed. Now I can get the hinge, stick it in there, just like that, and it's locked. This is not going anywhere. Now, track. You want to work as accurate as you can, and you really want to get this, this gap here as small as you can. I put the ties uh, like this because it just it just looks nice. Not really prototypical, but then again, Kate isn't prototypical at all. And I decided to to spike um, these sections of track in place just to make it extra rigid. And these sections are also sectional track, just to ensure that it's absolutely straight and that my uh, flex rails in the flex track doesn't go walking around. And lastly, we need a system to keep the bridge up. So what I came up with is a pulley system. So it's basically a cord with two pulleys right there, right there. And it goes down to a weight right there. And that holds the bridge up just like that. You can adjust the hooks slightly. I actually did that had it here, had it here, and had it way at the end just to get the right attention and feel. If you put it more towards the end, then the downside is if you put it more towards the end, there's a lot of force pulling in that direction. I didn't want that. But if you put it more towards this section, and there's just not enough arm from the hinge to here to actually uh, lift the gate up and, and to hold it up as well. But now I do need to lift it up. There's a little bit of um, weight, a little bit of tension is relieved because of the counterweight. And then once it's somewhere up here, as you see, it will just hold itself. But the last section, just basic ge geometry, um, it, it falls down like that. And that was really easy to do, or just install it. Of course, I have this rafting system way up here, so that just really makes it easy as well. And then I go down to a weight. Now, if you know what this part is, please let me know in the comments below. I think it's a part of uh, railroad track, but it can also be part of an old steam engine. I have no idea. If you do know it, let me know. So here's the system one more time. Got the pop-up, got the pulley. Got the weight going down, and that's a lift gate. All we need now is to connect the track and get the trains rolling. And that is how you make a lift gate. Now, if you want to follow the progress as I lay all the track and start to run trains on my layout, check out the videos that you see on the screen right now. Thank you guys all for watching. That's it for today. Thank you, and bye bye.